Welcome back to Inside Politics with CK. Uh, my name is Chris Kenny Dewandu, coming to you live from the studios of Silverbed Television and Silverbed News 24, two, two channels through which you, um, you watch this program every Friday at this time. Uh, those are some of the news that made the headlines during the week. As I said, today we are going to be talking about the House of Representatives, uh, one chamber that um, have proved its mark since 1999 as a as an arbiter of um, voice of Nigerians, uh, you know that we, within the federal legislature, we have the Senate and House of Representatives. House of Representatives is made of 360 members uh, elected from all parts of Nigeria. So today we're going to be looking at activities of the um, House of Representatives since it was inaugurated uh, sometime in June, uh, yeah, I think June or July. And, and today, uh, my guest is Representative Aki uh, Ruth Mijinio, House Postman and Chairman House Committee on Media and Public Affairs. Good evening, sir. It's nice to have you on the program this evening, sir. Likewise, good evening, CKN, and uh, good evening to our viewers at home. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you on this program. Um, let us start on a, on a very nice note. Uh, let me ask, uh, have you received your, your own... Uh, uh, SUV, as it were, and, <laughs> you know, um, the, have the well, House of Representative you. members received their vehicles, uh, which will enable them to go about their jobs, um, as it were. Well, thank you very much. Um, personally, um, I haven't received mine, but again, it goes beyond me as a person. As I've made very clear, we've been very upfront and um, very... Um, what's the word, accountable in terms of that, that um, there's a process through which uh, all members are going to be giving vehicles uh, to their offices for them to be able to function, right? So it's not really even me, even when eventually it is allocated, it will be allocated to my office. It's going to belong to the National Assembly throughout the period uh, of the four years um, that I, I would be uh, for this four years tenure. So, yeah, yes. So that's the process that is currently uh, in place. Yes, you must have seen what has been happening uh, all over, both on, on the, the media, social media, and the rest of them, where Nigerians feel that that was a high one, um, buying 160 million vehicles for uh, members of the legislative arm in Nigeria at this time point in time, uh, when we are really facing a lot of economic hardship. Um, what is your reaction to that? Well, to start with, like as, as has been stated, um, that is a grossly exaggerated um, amount. And um, like we've said, you know, time and again, that um, there is a broad, broad spectrum of, um, you know, public opinion on this issue. Um, there's some that believe outrightly that um, members should not have any vehicles to be able to um, work, you know, um, and media hasn't done so well to target um, luxury vehicles, you know, to target all sorts of names as though, um, you know, to paint the legislator, uh, legislature as um, some entitled group of people that just want to feed fat on the Commonwealth. But when you look at it more from the perspective that um, you are you are asking, you know, members that have been elected to carry out some job functions, you're expecting them to maintain a distance between, um, you know, the executive and not do anything, you know, um, not carry out oversight functions, not carry out constituency outreach, you know, expecting that the executive should fund all these issues, you know. So you, when you look at it from that more nuanced perspective, you'll see that, look, it's more of work tools that have been given to members to be able to function. I think that the focus should be now on holding members to account. I think it's it's more about um, everyone now looking, you know, to whoever it is that represents them in the house to ensure that they are actually carrying out the duties that they were elected to do. So I think that's more about it. We've been open, we've been upfront. Yes, we've taken quite some flack, and again, there are a lot of key learnings for the future. But at this point in time, I think what is important is that Nigerians know that, um, you know, members are expected to carry out a function and have been, you know, empowered to do so without any uh, any issue. So there, there, there is the need for accountability uh, uh, from, you know, members individually and collectively. Yeah, thank you very much. Now let's go to the uh, mission proper. Now, during the week, um, the House of Representatives 
invited the service chiefs to, uh, uh, to address it on uh, security issue relating to security. And some fundamental um, issues came up um, during that uh, uh, interaction with the service chief. One was the an indictment of the judiciary and also the request by the chief of defense staff that uh, Simon Epa, a Nigerian based in Finland who seems to be stoking the uh, ember of violence in the south is need to be, uh, the federal government need to do something about it. Um, now my question is, why did the House of Representatives invite those service chiefs in, in the first instance? Well, I wouldn't, um, you know, speak specifically on some of the outcomes. You would see that even the questions that were asked, we asked because we wanted to be accountable. We made it in the full glare of the public. Uh, but most of the answers were taken in an executive session because these are classified security details that um, are not, you know, expected to be made um, public as such. We can't divulge, you know, how, um, you know, our, our sovereign strategy in addressing and containing critical um, security challenges. However, um, what is important is that um, the House being a um, being an engaging house, being a responsive house, being a house that wants to make a difference, being a house that um, this time around in the 10th Assembly, we want to draw the line. If Nigerians have had a bad perception about the National Assembly, the House of Representatives, this is where it stops. We want Nigerians to start to know that the house is responsive, the house is up to the task of representing Nigerians well. And if you look at it all through the country at this point in time, we're going through uh, very serious security challenges in almost every nook and corner of, of the country. In my own constituency, uh, where I represent, it is not one federal constituency, which uh, comprises the Korea and Oye local governments. We're having serious issues around uh, banditry and kidnapping. And Nigerians want answers, right? And that's the reason why it was important to us, right, as a house, and under the leadership of Right Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, to invite the security teams to come and answer to this question so that we can know. Because like I said, um, you have said in several fora in the past that um, we can't afford to wait until things go any worse before we get things on. We, we have to be on the ball to hold those responsible for securing us um, to account. And this essential, this, this move that we had is enshrined in our legislative agenda, okay? The 10th House of Assembly has a legislative agenda, and, and security is one of the central focus of that, of, of, of that agenda. And also in that agenda, you would find that uh, we've proposed or we've agreed to carry out um, extensive sectoral debates. So, so that engagement with the security chiefs was one of a series of debates that we're going to have with key members uh, of the executive arm of government, where we're going to dialogue with them so that we can know what their challenges are, we can know what areas they need um, the input of the legislature, legislature um, in terms of um, review of extant um, legislation or, you know, in many cases to create new ones. So that's essentially what we're doing as a responsive house. We've engaged with security chiefs sometime um, next week or or at, you know i think the upper week will be engaging with um, those in the financial services sector so the minister of finance the cbn governor and other people are also going to come and stand before the house which in effect is standing before nigerians to answer to certain questions so that for us is is a challenge and i think it's it, it's um it you know we should give some credit to the um the service chiefs for understanding and cooperating with us in this regard in ensuring that um, they, they turned up um, and they were on the ball. They were with us for several hours, you know, to answer to these questions and to engage with us. And uh, we look forward to doing more of it, but we had a very, very productive engagement with the service chiefs. The House of Representatives seems to carve in uh, a niche for itself and seems to be one this current um, uh, House of Representatives and uh, eating itself into the hearts of uh, many Nigerians with some of the things you've done within the last few months that you've well, yeah, to be specific, I will remember. Now, why, let me, uh, let me specificate on the issue of the yacht, the presidential yacht, which uh, I know that the, you and your colleagues um, vehemently opposed and decided to move the, uh, that amount to that of education scholarship. Why did you decide to do that? 
Well, thank you very much. Um, the um, sub matter you're talking about is the um, supplementary budget, which yeah. came before the House from the presidency. Mm -hmm. It was a proposal from the executive arm of government. Mm. And in scrutinizing it, we felt that, um, so first of all, um, we had, you know, the heads of all the ministries, departments, and agencies were, that were affected by that budget. So we had the Minister of FCT, we had, you know, Minister of Agriculture, we had, you know, all the ministers that were concerned, they came before the House to defend the budget, and we engaged with them. And, you know, in that particular instance that you talk about the presidential yacht, I think, again, we need to, um, you know, ensure that we get the right narrative about issues out. The presidency has clarified that it wasn't it wasn't like a president, his excellency president, you know, who said, oh, I need a yacht, and then the way it's been framed, you know, in the media, that wasn't the situation. It, it was actually under the Navy budget line. It was a Navy budget line, and it's when you say presidential yacht, it was because this particular yacht is supposed to be like a flagship. It's supposed to be, um, you know, the top of the fleet, as it were, and that's why it's called presidential. So it's, it has very little to do with the, uh, Mr. President, maybe in his capacity as commander-in-chief, but nonetheless, we weren't convinced because it was scrutinized despite the fact that we needed to expedite the passing of it, but it was scrutinized and we decided that this uh, should be taken out and applied to uh, the students' loans. Now, if you look around the country, we have a country where about 70% are young people. There are young people in school that need to get by. Look, we, we have a sense of urgency. That's one thing I'd like to reiterate. The House of Representatives has a sense of urgency to which we approach the challenges that we're currently going through in the country. So when you look at it, that most of the people that go through these are young people. Most of them are in school and just want to be able to concentrate on their studies. And thankfully, we have a student loan um, law that, are, that, you know, that is just getting off the ground. And we felt that this would be a better opportunity for us to apply these funds, for young people to be able to access funds, to be able to remain in school and concentrate and um, you know, get great, good grades and be, be able to contribute to national development. So that essentially it tells you that the House is, is um, very alive to our responsibilities. And I'd like to reiterate, to make it very clear, that the 10th House of, Assembly, of, of Representatives under the leadership of the 10th Assembly of the House of Representatives, under the leadership of Right Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, we are very, very intentional about uh, changing the narratives about the legislator, particularly about changing the narratives about our role in nation building. For too long in the past, um, the reason why this, you know, per pessimism and this cynicism and this uh, distrust um, has been in, in place against uh, public office holders, but particularly the legislature, is because nothing has been done to challenge certain narratives. We, even in instances where it's extremely difficult, we've made it a policy, we've made it uh, a point of duty to be open about issues, even issues that we know. You mentioned the issue of vehicles. We were the ones that came out openly to give you all the details of all, all what was going on in terms of that. So we made it a policy uh, to be as open and upfront on the issues as possible and to engage with Nigerians as much as possible because we want to change that okay. perception, not only in rhetoric, okay. but also in our actions. Okay. Uh, Honorable, time is not our friend on this program. Um, but let me quickly put in this. Now, on the issue, you could see from what is coming up from the various tribunals and the, and the court, uh, there's a lot of lacuna and the rest of them. So Nigerians are feeling that the electoral as acts is presently stands needs to be reviewed. Uh, are you of that school of uh, thought as well? And what is the, if, if yes, what is the House of Representatives going to do about that um, with your colleagues? Uh, certainly, certainly we, okay. we are of the school of thought. Okay. We agree with you that, uh, are you with me? Yes, yes, please, go ahead. Right. We have just two minutes, some few Hello? minutes to go. Yes. Okay. Yes, we agree. Okay, we agree that, um, yes, there is a lot that needs to be done in terms of electoral reforms. And that's why you see that central to our legislative agenda, right, is, um, you know, certain proposals. So, for example, uh, revisiting the Electoral, um, uh, electoral Act, 
you know, for certain amendments, and also even legislating on the creation of an electoral offenses uh, commission that can focus extensively, you know, on the issue of uh, ensuring that people are brought to book for electoral malpractices. The reasons these things, um, the electoral malpractices flourish is because people simply get away with it. So that's one of the factors that we have uh, in there, and of course, um, looking at areas in the Electoral Act to be able to um, address. You'd also find that in our legislative agenda, which was developed through an extensive uh, process of consultation to listen to stakeholders across the board and also to build consensus amongst ourselves. Since the, the, the advent of the Fourth Republic in 1999, this is the first time we have eight political parties represented. So you can imagine what it was to be able to build consensus to have a legislative agenda. One of the things there is the need for diaspora voting to also be able yeah. to include yeah. um, Nigerians that are abroad mm -hmm. to also participate in the electoral process. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I want to encourage um, Nigerians as much as possible. We have come out with a, a legislative agenda um, and we, you know, it's, it's, it's available. We encourage people to get copies of this and engage with that process to know what is going to guide um, our legislative work over the next four years, mm -hmm. and more importantly, to hold us to account to it. Like you said, electoral reforms is one of the crucial aspects of the legislative agenda. We want you to hold us to account to it. The legislative agenda has short, medium, and long-term uh, provisions, targets, mm -hmm. and timelines, clear timelines, because we're a very serious assembly and we're, we're down to be able to make um, a huge difference. Yes, uh, as we went down now, um... Let me ask you, what will be the main focus of this uh, 10th uh, House of Representatives? Um, and it, what do you want Nigerians to remember this assembly for? Well, I'll just read very quickly, right, the, the eight points that we're working on, strengthening good governance, improving national security, law reforms, economic growth, social sector reform, inclusion and open parliament, uh, redirecting Nigeria's foreign policy and then climate change and environmental sustainability. But overall, we want Nigerians to remember, um, you know, the 10th Assembly of the House of Representatives as a responsive one, as the people's house, a, a house that is truly empathetic, that um, is in touch and in tune with the feelings of our people. Nigerians are going through a whole lot at this point in time, um, you know, because of the removal of fuel subsidy and so many other economic challenges, the house is on top of it. We want Nigerians to remember that we have responded in, um, you know, in a timely way um, with, with legislative action, including bills, including motions, and other means of oversight, right, in line with the Constitution to ensure that, um, you know, we bring support to Nigerians as quickly as possible. We okay. want Nigerians to remember us um, as being accountable okay. and uh, being responsive. When you do call yeah. me and you have more time on your program, I'll certainly be happy to come and engage for uh, Yo, de Definitely, I'm, we're going to do that because um, you are one of the youngest uh, members of that, uh, of that house. And I was going to ask you about the not too young to run and uh, focus on the younger generation um, having the opportunity to be better. As, we just, as you just said, I will definitely invite you back to the program. Time is not our friend on this program. But I have to sincerely thank you for being my guest this evening. Um, Honorable Akirotimi, uh, the Chairman House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, representing uh, the good people of Ikole and Oyer um, Federal Constituency. Thank you very much for being my guest this evening. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, have a good evening, viewers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, if you enjoyed that, if you're just joining us, well, you've missed it. Uh, well, you have to join us again next week.